Yeah, my name is uh, Christian Smosek and I'm uh, a postdoc at the uh, Sanford Burnham Medical Research Institute. And uh, as a root colleague, first I want to say a big thank you for the, the organizer for uh, inviting me. So that's, thank you very much. And the se my second pre-comment is actually is for Rutger. I think your, uh, your tree of life issue is even more complicated than that because as it's becoming in increasingly clear that there is no tree of life, it's a graph of life, especially if you're thinking about the bacteria and single cell organism. Of course, if you're thinking about monkeys and apes, there it's probably a tree, but if you go deeper, and it's, it's a graph which makes the whole thing even more difficult. Anyway, so now to the official talk. Uh, so basically, first, I'll just give you a short information about myself, for people who know me, some of the software projects I did, and then I quickly introduce TopSan and how we uh, connected TopSan to the, or how we are in progress of connecting TopSan to the semantic web. So as I already said, I currently work at the Center for Burn Burnham Medical Research Institute. Previously, I was a GNF and I, I got a PhD with uh, John Eddy at Washington University Medical School. And basically, my research interests are, are regulatory pathway evolution, comparative functional genomics, especially with, with a view on a, a domain evolution, like looking at the genomes as a set of domains as opposed to genes. And I'm generally also interested in sequence function prediction, analysis in prediction, and also in our phylogenetic inference. And uh, I'm interested in Java, and the Ruby, and BioRuby and generating graphics and visualizations, because I also like a computer game, so, so these things fit nicely. And uh, some of my uh, software projects I did so far is that one of them is Forrester, which is a, is a collection of mostly Java and Ruby for comparative genomics and evolutionary biology. And the, here's the URL if you're interested in. And another thing is I also developed PhiloXML, which is an XML standard for phylogenetic trees or also phylogenetic networks. And again, there's a paper on it and there's a, there's a website if you want to know more about that. But so the main topic, and it will be really, really short, is about, is about this, these things called TOPSEN. And the, what TOPSEN actually stands for is the Open Protein Structure Annotation Network. And uh, here you can also see the, the website if you, if you want to look at it. And uh, the use case for uh, TOPSAN is that, um, uh, as you may or may not, may not know, there is not only like high throughput uh, like, uh, sequencing, there's also high throughput uh, pr production of uh, protein structures, 3D structures. And those are, it's called uh, structural genomics. And, and uh, this, these uh, centers, there's maybe, I think about three or four in the United States, has already produced more than 10,000 protein structures. And of course, all the structures, they get uh, deposited in, um, uh, in PDB, the protein data bank. But most of those structures, they have no, there's no annotation. There's just a, there's just a structure, maybe the species. But it's very basic, so it's not very, in some ways, it's, it's not very useful, this, inform, even this information, even though a lot of money is being spent and a lot of effort. But the result is, you know, due to the lack of annotations, it's sometimes not so useful. And so that's why we developed the TOPSAN, which is a, basically, it's kind of like a wiki for, for protein structures from, which come from a, a structural genomics projects. And it allows the users to, to, uh, to annotate those, those structures in, in various ways. And so I think currently there are about, uh, maybe so far we have about 400 different uh, annotators. I mean. Some of those annotators only annotated one protein, others annotated more than one, but I hope it's growing. And um, so basically that's, uh, that's what, what the top sign is. And uh, how now that the semantic web actually comes into play, it's, it's actually the, uh, the last biohackathon in, in, in 2010, which I, I thought maybe not actually useful to try to connect top sign to the, to the semantic web. And so, and so that's what, what we did now. So there's actually, when, when you actually go to the top site itself, you can see there's now, um, there's specific tags for the annotators, which you, if you write your annotation, you know, there's specific tags you can use. And then this tags, or the information in these tags is, is accessible via the, 
the, the semantic web, so it can be it can be queried and it, it can be analyzed from other general purpose tools. And um, you know, some of this uh, this data which is available via the, the semantic web, it's also it has been generated automatically. And uh, at this point, uh, what what is lacking? There's no at this point we don't really have an ontology, so that's that's still something which we need to work on, and it's still uh, in progress basically. But the hope is that uh, eventually all those those annotations, or at least part of it, which can be encoded in some in some ways, they'll be accessible for uh, for co computation analysis using using semantic web technology. So yeah, that's. As I said, it's, we, we, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. And um, again, but this is our, these are acknowledgments. Those are like the, our programmers. And this is those are our supervisors. And we, we got funding from, from these various places, like the Joint Center for Structural Economics and for Programming <laughs> Institute, UCSD, and, and uh, JCMM. So, and again, thanks for the, for the organizers, and thanks for, thank you for listening, even though I'm sure by now many people must already be tired because uh, it's a long day and I uh, appreciate you listening, so thanks.